In this lesson, we'll take a look at the derivatives of the sine and cosine functions. And we'll start with differentiating the sine function. And we're going to use the uh, first principle's definition of the derivative first to show this. So the function is y equals sine x, or f of x equals sine x. So when I evaluate f of x plus h, then it'll be sine of x plus h. Notice I'm substituting in place of x the x plus h. Uh, f of x is our original function. Uh, you can say we're replacing x with x, but that still means that uh, f of x is the original sine x function. Now we're going to use an identity over here uh, in order to expand out sine of x plus h. And the identity is this, sine of x plus y, or you could use a plus b here, it doesn't matter. The sine of x plus y is sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. And so we're going to expand out sine of x plus h. So notice it goes sine of the first angle times the cos of the second angle. So sine of the first angle, cos the second angle, plus, and then it's cos of the first angle, sine of the second. So cos of the first angle, sine of the second angle, and then of course minus the sine x on the end. Now notice that there is a common factor if you group the first sine x cos h and the minus sine x together, there's a common factor of sine x there. So I'm grouping those two together, of course still over h, and notice that there's a common factor of sine x we can factor out. So if you factor a sine x out of sine x cos h, you get cos h. If you factor a sine x out of a minus sine x, there's the minus one. Now what's left then is this cos x sine h. And so that's what's here, cos x times sine h over h. And there's a reason I have the cos x written just multiplied by this. It would be the same if I wrote cos x sine h over h, but I'm going to factor the cos x out, so that's why it's written just multiplied by it. Now in both these cases, it's h that's tending towards zero, and h is completely independent upon what x is. So the sine x can be factored out of this limit, and I've actually broken this down to the two limits. So I'm taking the limit of this part plus the limit of this part. So over here in the second part on the right side, the cos x can also be factored out of this limit as well. So it's cos x and then limit of sine h over h as h tends towards zero. And of course after I factor the sine x out here, I have the limit as h toward, tends towards zero of cos h minus one over h. Now what exactly are these two limits? Well, a couple ways that we can show what those two limits are is we could graph the, uh, I'm graphing here cos h minus 1 over h, or in the graphing calculator it's cos x minus 1 over x. And so notice as it tends, we're talking about as h tends towards 0, and it really doesn't matter whether you're tending towards the left or the right, of course those two le uh, left and right hand limits are the same. The function actually is undefined here. We, we can't actually see a break in the graph because that's where the x and y axis intersect, so we can't actually see the, the uh, uh, undefined part in the graph. But of course this actually is undefined where h is 0 because the denominator would have a value of 0 and you can't divide by 0. But notice that as you approach where x is 0 from the left and from the right, the uh, f value of the function is approaching 0. Um, you actually, I've actually traced here on, on the graph, and you can see that when x is 0, the, there is no y value, so that means there is an undefined point there. But it is tending towards 0 from either side here. Now, here's a table of this. And in the table, I'm uh, starting at negative 1, and I'm going up, and I'm approaching 0. Of course, at 0, see, it says error. It's undefined. And the, of course, the y value, or the function value, is the value of this. And notice that it is getting closer and closer to 0 uh, as we approach uh, an x value of 0. So this limit should be 0. Now, what's this limit over here? Well, I graphed sine x over x, or sine h over h. And uh, again, that would be undefined where h is 0 because uh, it would be the sine of 0 divided by 0. It's actually 0 over 0, which is un an undefined amount. Um, and of course, I've traced here on the graph uh, where x is 0, there is no y. So there actually is a break in the graph right there, even though you can't see it because it's right on the y-axis. But notice that um, it is approaching, and that's actually a y value of 1. We can see in this table here, I started x at negative 2. And, uh, and, and went up, sorry, negative 0.2, went up by 0 0.05. And uh, notice at 0 it's undefined, but it's certainly you can see that the y value is getting closer and closer to 1. 
So since that's approaching a value of 1 from the left and from the right, this limit is 1. So this limit is 0, and this limit is 1. Now, since this limit is 0, we actually have sine x times 0, so that's actually gone, because that has a value of 0. And this is cos x times 1, so the derivative is actually just cos x. So the derivative of sine x is cos x. So that's one of the two derivatives. Now we flip over to the next page. We're going to differentiate co or show what the derivative of cosine x is. And remember that sine x uh, is, sorry, cos x is sine pi over 2 minus x. That's a uh, uh, trigonometric, identi trigonometric identity that relates cosine with sine. And that's because they are um, uh, phase shifts of one another. Uh, the sine and cosine graphs are identical, they're just uh, uh, one is a horizontal translation of the other. So if we write cos x as sine pi over 2 minus x, then we can differentiate this. So the derivative of sine uh, pi over 2 minus x would be cos pi over 2 minus x, and then we would multiply that by the derivative of what's in here. This is actually just chain rule. Um, see, this isn't just simply x, it's pi over 2 minus x. So the derivative of pi over 2 minus x is just negative 1. Pi over 2 is a constant, so its derivative is 0, but when we, when we differentiate negative 1x, the derivative would be negative 1. So we multiply that by negative 1. Now, <clears throat> also, cos pi over 2 minus x is equal to negative sine x. That's another trigonometric identity. So, sorry, is equal to sine x. I said negative sine x. Cos pi over 2 minus x is equal to sine x, and then we're multiplying by negative 1. So the derivative works out to be just negative sine x. So the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So just to summarize, the derivative of sine x is cos x, and the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So they're almost each other's derivative, except the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So in this example, uh, we're going to differentiate the following, and uh, we're differentiating for sine x. So using this uh, derivative up here, the derivative of sine is cosine. So this would be, it would be 4 times the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. So the derivative would just be 4 cos x. For b, we're differentiating 5 cos x. So it would be, now, it would be 5 times the derivative of cos x. The derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So then it would be 5 times negative sine x, or negative 5 sine x. Now for C, uh, there's two different parts here, so we use that uh, um, differentiating rule when you have two or more parts, you just differentiate all the parts. The derivative of 2 sine x would be 2 cos x, and then minus pi times the derivative of cos x. So there's the pi, and the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. Now this part can be simplified, we can uh, multiply two negatives and get a positive, and so it would be 2 cos x, and then this would be plus pi sine x. Pi is just a constant, no different than 2. And so um, just like when we differentiate 2 sine x is 2 times the derivative of sine x, uh, same for the pi. Pi cos x's derivative would be pi times the derivative of cos x. So that's our simplified derivative.